My name is Chad Layton. I'm a partner with a law firm in Chicago, Siegel, McCambridge, Singer & Mahoney. Part of my practice is providing consultation to businesses when they are drafting and negotiating business contracts, and I also handle commercial litigation. Today, I'm here to discuss with you some of the best practices that you may want to consider when you're developing and drafting contracts for your business. Naturally, the language that's in a contract is extremely important, and it's critical not to underestimate the impact that the exact language that's used in a contract can have on your business. It's critical to pay attention to the specific language that's used and how it does impact your business and how it could potentially impact a lawsuit in the event that there's a dispute down the road. There are two core values that I'd like to discuss with you during the course of this presentation. The first core value is fairness. In other words, is the contract fair to you and your business and is it fair to both parties that are involved in the contract negotiations? The second core value that I'd like to discuss with you is whether or not you have reasonable protection against foreseeable risk. It's important to consider when you're developing a contract the possibility that you may have commercial litigation down the road. The good news is there are some provisions that you can include in a contract that may provide your company with protection in the event of litigation. The first core value I'd like to discuss with you today is fairness. Naturally, you want to ensure that the terms of the contract are fair to both parties that are involved. And there are several considerations that pop up when you're considering this issue. First and foremost, and needless to say, you want to make sure that the contract terms include and cover all of the issues that are important to your business. But what's also important is to pay very close attention to the terms and conditions that the other party to the contract is asking to include in the contract. Many businesses use form contracts. And even if you've dealt with another business before and you know what their form contract looks like, Every time you enter into a new contract with that company, you want to make sure you pay very close attention to their form and the terms and conditions that are in that form. You want to make sure first and foremost that those conditions that the other party is asking to include are both reasonable and necessary for the deal that you're looking to reach. It's important because oftentimes form contracts include terms and provisions that are not truly necessary. And if that's the case for your deal, you want to make sure that you remove those provisions in order to make sure you don't get in trouble down the road in the event of a dispute. It's also important to consider the practical impact that the terms and conditions another party is asking you to include will have on your business. How much money is it going to cost you, for example, to comply with those terms? What is the cost in terms of man hours to make sure that you're satisfying the obligations another party is asking to include in your contract? I think it's also important to ask the reason why a party is asking to include specific terms in your contract. If there isn't a good reason for that term, don't include it. Another issue to consider when evaluating the fairness of a contract is whether or not the contract is unconscionable. Now that's a term that courts use to really evaluate the fairness of a contract and there are several things a court looks at to determine whether or not a contract is fair. Needless to say, it's important to consider the unconscionability of a contract before you enter into it because a court could potentially determine that a contract is null and void if it's determined to be unfair. So what are some of the things that courts look at and that you want to consider when you're developing and negotiating your contract language? First, you want to make sure that any important terms are clear and easy to read in the contract. Any of the terms that are really critical for your contract, you want to make sure those are not hidden in a maze of other language that's contained in the contract. You also want to make sure that both parties have a fair and reasonable opportunity to review the contract and understand its terms. Finally, it's important um, to make sure that the terms of the contract are not so one-sided that a court may look at it and say this is totally unfair and I'm going to declare the contract null and void. There's one other issue I'd like to discuss when it comes to looking at the overall fairness of a contract and that has to do with indemnification. 
So as you may know, indemnification is your right to receive reimbursement or compensation uh, from a company that is negligent and causes a claim or causes damage of some kind. Uh, generally speaking, what I recommend is preparing your contract so that the indemnification provides that each party is required to indemnify the other for its own negligence. And, and here's what I mean by that. If you have parties A and parties B that enter into a contract, and if down the road uh, somebody gets hurt because party B was at fault, you want to make sure that if party A is sued, then party B has a responsibility to provide indemnification to party A. In other words, to compensate party A for any money that has to pay, it has to pay, including attorney's fees uh, or money to satisfy a judgment or a settlement uh, because party A is not at fault for that particular incident. Now this may sound like common sense, but I've seen lots and lots of contracts where a party asks another party to indemnify it for its own negligence. In other words, party A is required to indemnify party B even though party B may be the one at fault. I don't think that is, a, a, generally speaking, a good way to go in a contract. Now, of course, there are exceptions to that rule, and there may be times where, for business reasons, you do want to include a provision like that. But overall, if you want the contract to be fair, you want to make sure that the indemnification provision is fair and balanced to both parties, and that it's clearly drafted to make sure that you're protected in that manner. Uh, next, I'd like to discuss with you the second core value that I mentioned, uh, and that is providing your company with reasonable protection against foreseeable risks. And there are several points and provisions that I'd like to address here. First, when you're negotiating the terms of your contract with another party, whenever possible, it's always advisable to limit the types of damages and warranties uh, that are available in the event of a lawsuit. And here's what I mean. For example, under the law, you can limit the types of damages that would be recoverable if there's a dispute or a lawsuit down the road. You can limit another party's ability to recover lost profits. You could also limit another party's ability to recover special or consequential damages, which may be the sorts of damages that you didn't consider when the contract was first entered into. Having a provision like this in your contract is favorable because it limits the liability exposure that you may have down the road. Additionally, for those companies that are involved with the manufacture or distribution of products, whenever possible, I recommend drafting your contract so that you're limiting or uh, eliminating in total uh, warranties. This is another way that your company can protect itself down the road from liability. Another important provision to consider including in your contract in order to protect your company has to do with attorney's fees. And that's something you'll want to consider before executing a contract. What I recommend generally is that a company include a provision in its contract which states that a party who prevails in the event of a dispute or litigation will be entitled to recover its attorney's fees. And why do I recommend this? There are a couple of reasons. First, it helps to ward off meritless lawsuits. Second, if you do find yourself in a lawsuit and if you're engaged in settlement negotiations, if you have a strong position and a strong case, having an attorney's fee provision can be very useful leverage during settlement discussions with the other parties involved. And for this reason, I think it's important to include a provision like that in your business contract. Another important provision to consider is a forum selection clause. In other words, if you get into a dispute with one of your business partners, a forum selection clause will state where a lawsuit or a private arbitration would have to be held. This is especially important if you are dealing with companies that are located out of state or even out of the country. If you have a lawsuit that's filed against your company or you need to file a lawsuit against another company, if there's going to be a trial down the road, you want to make every effort that you can to minimize the impact of that trial on your business. If you can have a trial proceed at a location that's close to where your business is located, that's going to be less impact on your business operations. It's going to be more convenient for you and for your employees who may have to appear and testify at that trial. And most of the time, unless you're dealing with a very extreme situation, 
courts are going to uphold forum selection clauses. So I recommend including a provision like that in your business contract. Another provision that you may want to consider when you're developing your business contract is a private arbitration provision. Essentially, if you enter into an agreement with another party uh, and you include a private arbitration provision in your contract, what that means is if there's a dispute or a lawsuit down the road, that dispute will not be resolved in court in front of a judge or a jury, uh, but rather it will be resolved uh, in a private arbitration that is governed over by typically one or three arbitrators. Some companies are reluctant to agree to these types of provisions because they're unfamiliar with the process. However, there are several reasons why I think it's important for you to consider adding a provision like this to your business contract. First and foremost, if you have an arbitration, what that means is your dispute is going to be resolved privately. You're not going to be subject to a public hearing in court, and the media and the public would not have information regarding a private dispute or a dispute that you want to keep private with another business. Many companies find this uh, to be a very preferable situation to proceeding in a public forum. It's also important to know that generally speaking, if you proceed to an arbitration as opposed to a trial in public court, um, the arbitration process is going to be faster, which means that there's less uh, burden on your business, and the arbitration process is typically going to be less expensive than a trial, which most companies uh, find preferable. So I would recommend considering uh, and discussing with your colleagues, including a private arbitration provision in your contract when you're in the process of developing them. The last point I'd like to discuss uh, under this area is not so much relating to the actual drafting of the contract itself, but for those companies that are corporations or LLCs, it is critical that you ensure that you adhere to all corporate formalities that are required by the law. The reason that this is so important is because the failure to do so could down the road cause a court to pierce the corporate veil, which means that the individuals who are officers or directors of a company or are members of an LLC could potentially be subject to individual liability. That's something you definitely don't want to have to address down the road, and that's why those corporate formalities are so important to adhere to during the operation of your business. Now, there may be other specific provisions that you want to consider in the development of your business contract, and that will, of course, depend on the specific issues that relate to your business and the business of the partner with whom you are entering into that contract. So, to briefly conclude, um, Whenever you're developing a business contract, it's always important to make sure you specifically tailor the contract to the deal that's in front of you. Lots of companies like to use form contracts, which I think is a fine practice, but it's always important to make sure that you spend the time up front to look at that contract, if necessary, to obtain consultation, and to make sure that the contract is specifically tailored to the deal that you're working on and does not include any unnecessary provisions. I think it's also important to consider if you are developing a contract that is starting with a form contract provided by another company, it's, it's, it's okay to ask that other party to add provisions to that contract that may not be part of their form. And some of the provisions that I mentioned earlier definitely would be worth adding to another party's form contract if they're not already covered. I want to thank you for your time. I hope that you found some of the information uh, in this presentation to be helpful. As I mentioned at the outset of the presentation, uh, I regularly provide consultation to companies who are developing contracts. I assist with uh, drafting contracts, and I also have experience handling commercial litigation, which I find useful in providing consultation when companies are developing contracts. If anybody's ever looking for some assistance or guidance in this area, please feel free to give me a call and my contact information is available on the slide. Thank you.